what is the first thing that comes to their mind when they hear the word snake or when they see a snake? I have tried to note down most of their reactions. I'll uh, read those out to you. Lucky people find it interesting. Fascinating. Lot of people. Uh, apologies, my internet seems to be acting up. However, okay, I shall continue. So we were on interesting, fascinating. Lot of people associate it with fear, with fatality. Most people feel it is uh, snakes are something gross and slimy and stuff of nightmares. Thankfully, none of the, all this is true. Oh, of course, interesting, fascinating is true. Uh, so today we shall uh, touch upon all these aspects of snakes. Uh, first and foremost, we, majority of us are part of the group Natural Biodiversity. So let's understand what biodiversity means. Uh, biodiversity as the variety and variability of living organisms and the ecological complexes in which they exist. All right. That is the um, book definition of biodiversity. Mm, there are three types of biodiversity, the genetic biodiversity, species biodiversity and ecosystem biodiversity. And uh, when we uh, talk about the threats that exist to biodiversity, there are primarily eight threats that have been identified to the biodiversity. Habitat destruction, which is self-evident. And uh, habitat fragmentation, when destruction is in smaller parts. Fragmented habitats and which does not sustain uh, the ecosystem. Uh, pollution, overexploitation, introduction of exotic species which are not endemic to that region, uh, various uh, diseases, natural or introduced through human intervention, shifting or uh, tomb cultivation uh, that a lot of tribals. Uh, uh, practice in which it's a uh, slash and burn technique so lots of forest cover is taken off and poaching of wildlife these are the eight uh, threats to biodiversity per se now if if uh, that be the case let's move on to our uh, specific subject of uh, snakes we're trying to cover it under various uh, uh, heads like identification, bites, treatment, and precautions. These are the heads under which we shall try and cover it. First and foremost comes uh, the identification part. Now, um, my suggestion to everyone here is uh, identification is a very complex process. Uh, we assume it to be a, a simple process, which it is not. Uh, there are certain species of snakes which are unique in themselves, very trademark uh, uh, appearances. Those are very easy to identify. For example, uh, cobra, which if it flares the hood, then uh, very easily you can identify. A lot of snakes have unique features which are easy to identify. A lot of pit vipers with their triangular heads and uh, uh, green morphs or whatever variety of morphs that exist are comparatively easier to identify. However, uh, issue here is when you need a positive identification on a snake about which you're not very sure. Uh, so again, my suggestion always is um, it's a very complex process. And a lot of uh, species exist that need uh, um, taxonomic study, phylogeny study, or up to DNA analysis to come to confirmation about what type of snake it is. 
when we talk about identification as a common man, as a common person, uh, what I recommend to all of you is when you see a snake, first thing is give it enough freedom to go the way it wants to go. Take three steps back, let it go. For identification of a snake, you will need to do study the scales, scales of the head, scales on the dorsal side, scales on the ventral side, scales after the cloaca opening, they are called subcodals. For that, you will have to be physically holding the snake, which I really am not, uh, would not recommend anyone to do. So basically, our understanding for identification should be left either to people who have the experience, the experts. We have a number of such people. We should leave it to them. Uh, as long as uh, the moment we see a snake, primarily we should assume, that's my personal uh, mm, suggestion to everyone, especially to the beginners, is assume that it is a venomous snake and give it a wide berth. Now, the snake is uh, not interested in us as humans. So, primarily if it gets alarmed, it will try to move away, it will try to escape and give him enough time, never ever corner a snake. As you, all of you must be aware, all snakes are protected under the Indian Wildlife Protection Act of uh, 72. Mm, three species have been put in Schedule 1. Schedule 1 enjoys the maximum protection. Indian tiger, Bengal tiger is also part of Schedule 1. Uh, two ro rock python, reticulated, egg-eating snake have been put into Schedule 1. Uh, there are about uh, six snakes in Schedule 2 which are common snakes, which they have been included mostly uh, to discourage uh, trade of snake skins for which uh, snakes have been slaughtered over a long period of time. And rest of the snakes, all the snakes are under Schedule 4. Uh, therefore, the implication for all of us is that we have no legal right either to catch a snake, keep a snake, collect a snake, or harm a snake. Unless you are uh, bound on some scientific uh, procedure and you have the requisite sanctions of the state government to collect and study this. So, implication is very simple. We should never try and catch or hold a snake or get so near that how, how, what exact species of snake it is, we should try and do, uh, avoid that. Uh, in today's time, every phone has a camera, click a picture, click a clear picture, share it with people who are working in the field. Uh, they should be able to give you a fair idea as to what uh, species of snake it is. As far as uh, there are a lot of uh, myths about uh, identification of uh, venomous and non-venomous snakes on site. Like I brought out earlier, some of the snakes, of course, have unique uh, appearances, so they can very easily be identified as venomous or non-venomous. However, a lot of myths are floating around, like triangular head is supposed to be one of the cues that a snake is uh, venomous. There are a lot of pit vipers, and wipe their heads. A lot of other snakes flatten their heads in threat or under duress, and their heads uh, do look triangular. So that is uh, not a very um, elapids. Most of them do not have triangular heads. They are venomous, dangerously so. So elliptical pupils, vertical pupils, is a mainly believed. Uh, identification of a venomous snake. Elipids have round pupils. A lot of cat snakes which just have a lip. So that again is uh, not a uh, sure fact. Uh, you can actually identify a snake which you do not know otherwise whether it is a venomous or non-venomous. Like I brought out it's a long and tedious process best left to the experts to do the final identification. Treat a snake as venomous, give it space, give it freedom to move out. In case 
uh, there's a confrontation situation, call on help of experts who will, uh, with legal permissions, come in, probably rehabilitate and relocate the snake. Now, uh, there are certain myths that exist about snakes. I, it's interesting. I thought uh, it would be relevant that we touch upon them. Lash or beat and with their tail. Uh, of course, it's a myth. Uh, Cells that develop and end into a spine when they are handled, they use that spine to poke your skin and give you a feeling uh, as if you're bitten so that you release it. That's a defense mechanism. Of course, tail has nothing to do with envenomation or biting. Another one is, if a baby snake is seen, the mother could be close by. Again, if we talk about truth, most of the snake species uh, do not uh, indulge in upbringing the young ones. Majority of the species lay their eggs and go their way. So the hatchlings, when they emerge, are on their own. It is not a 100% uh, true situation to say whether the parent snake can be nearby, cannot, may not be nearby. So that has no relevance to the presence of the baby snake. Uh, baby or hatchling venomous snakes are more dangerous than the adults because they haven't learned how to control their venom. Mm, of course, uh, from right from hatching, they control their venom. But uh, because they are young and uh, less experienced, uh, more on the defensive, so they're likely to bite more than an adult. That is this thing. However, because of the body mass and all, the size of venom gland, the potency of venom remains the same, but quantities released uh, may be lower. So better, best to avoid, they do, they do look beautiful and cute. Better to avoid any uh, young snake, let it go its way. It's just trying to survive in this wicked world. A snake cannot strike or bite while underwater. Again a myth, snakes are very capable of biting underwater. Feed. To say that underwater snake would not be purely a non-scientific and will chase people. Uh, we, in our context, have watched a lot of uh, movies based on snakes, nagins, chadhari nagins, chasing, and uh, you know, getting uh, transforming into a beautiful woman and then back into a uh, female uh, cobra. Uh, we've been brought up on those kind of movies. Mm. There is no scientific fact to say a snake will chase people in any way. Uh, yes, at times a snake may appear to be coming closer towards you for the simple reason mm. that it is defensive and wants to scare you away. That is a possibility. However, uh, no snake will actively chase a person. Even um, there have been... Uh, Myths to say that for a protracted period of time, for years, a snake chased someone and finally bit. This is purely a myth. It uh, does not conform to science. Another common myth is if a snake is small, it must be a baby. Uh, well, of course, all baby snakes are small. That's a comparative statement. Mm, uh, larger snake species, the hatchling itself would be one foot plus. And uh, there are certain snakes that in their entire adulthood, they reach a size of seven to eight inches only. So any small snake would be a baby snake is not a right premise. Uh, they could be adult snakes of some species or they could be uh, juveniles of a larger species. When bitten or envenomated by venomous snake, the venom should be sucked out. Again, this is a very, very relevant part that we're going to touch upon a bit later during our discussion. Uh, however, uh, right now it will suffice to say uh, that as per medical protocol, snake bite treatment protocol, 
it is recommended never to do that it does not uh, help the patient neither does it uh, um, give uh, increase the chances of, of survival for the patient however medical uh, science will the matter to more complicated any bite situation never try and uh, uh, suck or cut the wound site or the bite it can be identified as being venomous due to triangular head we talked about it elliptical pupils we talked about it snakes do not have bones is another large myth snakes are vertebrates carnivorous vertebrates and uh, they have large number of bones in them uh, snakes and other reptiles can sting or deliver venom poison through their tongues because of the very obvious and fascinating uh, flicking of tongue that snakes resort to which is their main sense organ uh, there are a lot of myths regarding the tongue itself uh, let's conclude by saying that snake tongues are not uh, meant as conventional tongues for the they do not the task of taste and they uh, carry out the task of sensing so we'll touch upon this a bit later too um, there's some species of snakes can give off a venomous or poisonous breath now there again it's a myth um, there are a lot of species which have uh, specialized uh, fangs that assist them in uh, uh, spitting venom very accurately not so in Indian subcontinent context however yes in African context a lot of spitting cobras exist and they're very accurate in the uh, spitting uh, technique however uh, the monocole cobra um, that exists in uh, large parts of the country especially so in the northeast have somewhat somewhat modified teeth and their hiss is very very loud so there have been cases of spitting do not accurate and aimed spitting there have been some cases uh, where spitting has been reported again it is uh, let's uh, face it it's a defense mechanism the snake without coming in physical contact with you is trying to uh, cause you enough harm maybe blindness so that it can escape finally so that is that Venomous snakes can be identified by the habit of swimming above the water while a non-venomous snake swims beneath the surface. Again, a myth, uh, a venomous could be submerged, a venomous could be versa. So this is uh, no identification. Teeth can and or will bite. Teeth. Two. Uh, specialized teeth the mouths are full of teeth so snakes have teeth and can bite given uh, enough uh, provocation uh, using mothballs sulfur snake repellents will he help keep the snakes away again a myth uh, there is no scientific um, to the best of my knowledge uh, proof to say a snake will stay away from a particular smell um, any strong smell can probably discourage a snake but uh, there's no scientific fact to say if you place sulfur mothballs here and snakes will not come this myth is related more to friendly united states which says a snake that is not eating in captivity may be planning to escape and then size up their owner in bed and snakes can or will eat people of course a uh, uh, super big myth like uh, most of us know snakes have very slow metabolic rates uh, they take a longer time to digest pr their prey uh, they do their temperature control of the body through um, active sunlight soaking so they do not waste uh, their calories in heating up the body to an ambient temperature so their uh, finally their rates of metabolism are very slow so they take a long time to digest uh, uh, prey that is ingested and uh, hardly any species of snake uh, possibly 
eat an adult human being. Yes, always a possibility with a and a smaller person, a child or a small stature person. Possibility does exist, though very, very few such record, uh, records exist. That snakes are slimy and gross, of course, most, a uh, lot of people, um, especially the female gender, forgive my saying so, do feel that snakes are slimy and gross. Snakes' skin is dry, could be keeled, could be smooth, partly keeled. What you will feel uh, as and when you get to touch a snake. will enter uh, or can be found around barns and drink milk from cows. This is India also a lot of belief is there that a snake was uh, suckling on teats of a cow. Uh, very untrue. Snakes uh, don't do that. Lactogen is no good for their system. Oh, it is just a pure myth. Uh, no such uh, factual thing exists. That snakes can dislocate or unhinge their jaws in order to swallow large prey. This was a belief earlier and propagated scientifically too earlier. However, uh, later studies have shown that uh, they do not dislocate their jaws. Their jaws are joined by a very flexible tendon and uh, their mouths can open unnaturally large and after a large meal you can most probably see a snake readjusting his jaw, realigning it. There is no unhinging that happens. That snakes track revenge if one of them is killed back to her. These movies, it does happen in movies, does not happen as a fact. Uh, there is no picture printed in their eyes and uh, there is uh, uh, no such thing that happened that a snake would uh, be seek revenge from a person. As per scientific uh, research, they are supposed to be low intelligence animals. However, that is open to question. Snakes are deaf and are dancing to the music. This is in relation to the snake charmers that um, used to frequent the Indian countryside. Uh, Classically, snakes do not have an external or middle ear. They have an internal ear, which is uh, connected to their lower. Mm, low level vibrations they can feel when their jaw is on the ground. So they are not classically deaf per se. Vibrations they can feel, but their sense of smell, their sense of sight and various other heat seeking is uh, are their primary senses. That snakes must be coiled in order to strike. A lot of uh, novices do feel that if a snake is coiled, so I can take chances. Uh, this is a very long belief can lead to tragedy. Uh, snakes can and will strike from any pose. Though being coiled gives them the maximum leverage, but they can strike from any pose. So do not assume that a snake which is not coiled will not strike. That they are good and bad snakes. All snakes are good snakes. Let's face it, no snake, snake is a bad snake. But for a rod and the uncontrollable. The young ones, insects, uh, the rodent population and balance of ecosystem in amphibians and other reptiles. So, a decapitated or mortally injured snake will take until, until sunrise or sunset to die. Uh, see, rigor mortis before it sets in, uh, there is uh, even a decapitated head is capable of inflicting a fatal bite. So never touch a snake, it is a dead snake because even a scrape from the fang can lead to complications and uh, as a reflex action also the muscle memory uh, can lead to some bites. Uh, that venomous snakes always leave a series of two puncture marks at a bite. 
venomous snakes have a horseshoe pattern. Maybe traditionally true, but uh, please do not use it as a parameter to decide whether a bite is from a venomous or a non Venomous dangerous snakes that hardly leave a mark, you would need a micro or I mean a magnifying glass like a crate, which is very small fangs, and uh, bite mark is not seen with naked eye mostly. So, uh, to assume that you will always see two puncture marks is not true, even one fang puncture is enough to envenomate. So, you may not get a classically good bite, and you may have just one bite mark available. But please do not assume anything by the appearance of the bite. A uh, lot of uh, snakes that uh, take a good bite on you, chew, chew, and then their saliva venomation happens. So please never assume mm, any such thing by seeing the bite side. Best any bite to be treated as a venomous bite, seek immediate medical attention. Okay, and the list does go on and on and on. Yes, another interesting thing is uh, that uh, they look after the young, like I brought out earlier. Snakes mostly uh, don't even stay due for the hatching. So there is no question of looking after their young. Uh, their young from hatching are fully armed and equipped and they are on their own. So they make their way uh, around the uh, environment on their own. Okay, uh, that was that about uh, myths. Um, another interesting thing that is coming more to the light is uh, dry bites from venomous snakes. And now the question of dry bite is when you have an actual bite, a person has an actual bite, but there is no envenomation that happens. Implies that a snake has bitten you, but is not considered you as a prey or a threat enough that it wants to envenomate you. For a snake, venom is a precious commodity. It does not really want to waste, though you have cases when uh, you have multiple bites and multiple envenomations happening also. However, uh, mostly let's uh, say that dry bites do happen very often. Uh, even some species, it's been recorded as much as 80%. So dry bites uh, do happen. However, uh, there is no way for a person to know, for a layman to know whether a bite is a dry bite or not. Like we said, please get back as soon as possible to a medical uh, help. Some people feel venomous snakes are not arboreal, they do not climb and non-venomous snakes are all in trees, which is again, as you would all agree with me, is a, another myth. Uh, most snakes are good climbers. Some are specialized to live and hunt in trees, but most snakes can climb trees and you can find any species of snakes uh, high up in a canopy also. I personally seen a uh, 12 foot uh, king cobra about 60 feet high in canopy foraging for uh, uh, feed. So that was about the myths. Mm. So bites, like uh, very broadly, I'll touch upon there are four types of snake venoms. Primarily, let's focus at two, these being hemotoxic and neurotoxic. The other two being uh, prostolytic and cytotoxic. cytotoxic. Uh, all hemotoxics are vipers, broadly speaking, and neurotoxic snakes. They have different, different uh, symptoms. Uh, in my understanding, there is hardly any requirement of uh, getting into analyzing a bite and saying which from which snake it has come. It is best left to medical fraternity who are undertaking the treatment to know what it is. Uh, so different uh, um, symptoms appear uh, broadly for a layman is required if you are hemotoxics bite from a hemotoxic snake like a Russell's viper, soft scaled viper. It affects the heart and the cardiovascular system. A neurotoxic, of course, uh, impacts your neurons and system and the brain. 
uh, pit vipers will have localized uh, uh, symptoms at the bite side, mostly not fatal, mostly, not cannot say for sure. And uh, cytotoxic also localized impact is there. So uh, as far as the bite, uh, snake bite intervention is concerned, I'd like to share with you. Anybody wants it, I can share it with them online. You can uh, message me subsequently. There's a uh, standard treatment guidelines issued um, by uh, Ministry of Health, Government of India. And this is not so much of relevance to a layman, uh, but to know that mostly how a snake bite is treated. Uh, as far as most of us are concerned, uh, the issue is what first aid can we provide and what must, must we do if we are bitten or someone uh, is bitten and we are present. The primary thing is to first and foremost is to reassure the person because 70% um, of the snakes are non-venomous. So a huge probability that a bite is non from a non-venomous snake or a dry bite. Reassure that person. That is primary, primary function of you as a first aid provider. Uh, sucking, cutting, again, is not at all recommended. Does more harm than good. Uh, what is recommended is uh, put the person in a comfortable position. And the bite should, a person should be in a prone position on the left side. Make sure the breathing is happening normally uh, any constricting clothing ring something which is very um, constricting which can cause uh, uh, gangrene subsequently should be removed any tight clothing belt tight shoelaces shoes should be removed do not give anything orally to that individual and if you can see the snake don't try and kill or catch a snake if you can see the snake, try and observe what kind of a snake it is and for information of the medical uh, uh, fraternity. Evacuate that person as soon as possible to a primary health center or whichever best medical facility available nearby. Uh, time and again, I get this query and time and again, I, I am of that st strong opinion that we should not concern ourselves with identifying a snake. So why? Why is that? Like we brought out, different snakes have uh, a different uh, kind of a venom that they produce. However, latest, latest studies are showing some snakes have complex venoms. They have not only one type of venom, but a mixture of more than one type of venom. So, to treat a particular venom, you will need a monovalent antivenom. Means it is designed to that venom. However, in India, the monovalent antivenom is not available. The question is out. The treatment is done only with uh, anti-snake venom, which is polyvalent. really capable to all snake snakes in the country. So, uh, it is relevant to identify a snake. Uh, those the Personal experiences that uh, experienced doctors will treat the symptoms. When a patient is brought to a snake bite, even with a dead snake at times, the doctors won't start filling you up with antivenom, antivenom straight away. They wait for some indication to realize that envenomation has happened because antivenom itself is a foreign body, a body reacts to it, uh, allergic. Uh, reactions are very acute in some cases and uh, in a case of repeated uh, bite and repeated antivenom anaphylactic shocks have been reported and people have lost their lives to the anaphylactic shock also so it's a very complex uh, system however you and me as a layman as a uh, uh, responsible citizen if we see a snake bite victim Please remember, reassure, put that person in as comfortable position as possible. Do not give anything orally and evacuate the person earliest to the nearest medical facility. Uh, 
person who suspected of having been bitten not be made to do uh, like trying to reach a hospital by running and all that uh, will aggravate the situation will uh, pump up the blood flow and uh, the circulation of the venom and impact will be so much faster um, I let us specific questions as a subsequent time I'm just touching upon broadly on uh, treatment like I told you the first aid is what it is and the entire protocol is given in the standard treatment guidelines uh, by Ministry of Health and Family Welfare anybody interested can access it online I will precautions which is most important most of us uh, how to avoid uh, chances of a snake bite very simple if you could look at the figures um, surprisingly you will be shocked to know that we lose about 50 to 60 thousand people to snake bites every year in a country a couple of research the claims that because they are not reported to. Majority of it happen or people in a rural they sleep on the ground. Bites happen inadvertently when they were working, they put their hand somewhere or they're sleeping on the ground and a snake uh, bites them. Imagine. 60,000 to a lakh deaths every year to snakes alone and there's unlike some dangerous diseases there's a treatment that is a very specialized treatment that is available and that can save your life however all of us know that availability of uh, anti-snake uh, venom uh, is very suspect it is required to be available at primary health center level but in most cases it is not mm. so lot of people from rural background have belief of treatment going to an ocha going to a uh, local healer and they waste time when animation has happened they waste time going and when the situation gets so very bad that by the time they reach hospital it's too late to treat them so uh, this is a serious concern. Um, we must take steps avoid snake bites. Uh, local awareness is all of us must uh, get involved in programs to locals. First of all, what species is it? one? What are the timings? What season which snake is available? What are the likely uh, places at night have a flashlight don't put or your foot at night somewhere where you can't see don't reach under uh, you know a stack of wood or in a dark corner or a hole try and avoid all that if possible wear a pair of sturdy shoes wear a full length uh, trouser that will help to save you carry a light do not of course fool around with live snakes or dead presumed dead ones uh, that is just come up uh, through the social media um, superhero cult that starting in people catching holding kissing snakes and all that you know, that's the most dangerous thing that can happen uh, i would personally recommend that you leave by treatment to a qualified doctor they shall uh, do as they have been taught and as per the snake bite management protocol uh, i shall uh, handle questions about uh, this session a bit later right now i have something interesting for you i like i mentioned i am presently in meghalaya a beautiful diversity of snakes here uh, I wish to show you certain snakes to draw some uh, lessons and inferences. Uh, give me a moment, please. I'm switching the camera to take you.
okay i hope i am audible i hope i am audible we're going to start with an interesting uh, genus of pit vipers uh, we have uh, two pit vipers with us i'll i'll just show them to you Gently bring the camera closer, please. Uh, this is an uh, Poperium uh, Pope Spit Viper. Uh, you can see a distinct white and red line along the dorsal side of the snake. Uh, green to dull green color. Uh, the snakes, the belly snakes of the snakes, or uh, the scales are called uh, the ventral scales, and uh, you may be able to see these now. Now, if you see under this, you, if you all can see, these scales are the ventral scales. You see a very, uh, distinct spot here this is the cloaca the orifice that is used for reproduction as well as for other bodily functions the tail in these species because it's an arboreal snake that lives in trees is a prehensile tail used as a hand to grip okay now we'll uh, This is uh, Trimocerus salazar, a newly described uh, species of uh, pit viper from Arunachal Pradesh, recently described. If you see the color is uh, uh, more uh, of uh, lime green, yellowish. In this uh, specimen, you can see the ventral scales very clearly. You see they are across the entire abdomen. The cloaca opening is here mm -hmm. and the tail scales behind after the cloaca towards the tip of the tails are sub called subcaudal uh, scales. They on, depending on species are either divided or single scales. The eye color is light. So this is uh, the Salazar pit viper, like I said, a newly described species. They're very good at gripping. You can see its tail now. It's found a grip so that it, arboreal snake, so that it does not fall out of trees during its uh, movement. Another interesting uh, pit viper, mm. 
could be a northern spot-tailed pit viper. We have to confirm the identification. Uh, probably is a female or could be a female of uh, Trimacerus popperium popperium, uh, Pope's pit viper. Uh, I am yet to do a positive identification. You see the line in this case is uh, whitish, light cream colored. And uh, the color of eyes is also greenish. I'd not be remiss to remind you that please do not, do not handle snakes if you don't have the expertise or the legal permits. It's a very dangerous uh, situation. You can get bitten at any time. I have a couple of more snakes to show you. Uh, they are uh, unique to this region that we are in. I'll show you one of the interesting snakes. Uh, in our context, which is uh, probably the only snake that is venomous as well as poisonous. Implication is very simple. Venom has to be injected into a body to impact. And uh, poison has to be ingested, eaten to be impacting. This snake has both. Uh, it has uh, venom as well as poison. It is uh, assumed that the poison is collected through its diet of toads and all. And is stored under the skin. To be used as a defense mechanism. So this is a red-necked keelback. It is a now alarm display. You can see the neck mm -hmm. is flattened. The head is flattened. There is a uh, red, prominent red coloration around the neck. Uh, it flattens the neck as a thread display. Uh, this is a beautiful snake that is found in the northeast. Uh, next, I'll uh, show you a uh, Bungarus niger, a uh, greater black great that is uh, endemic to the eastern part of India. Uh, it is uh, different from a common crate that it does not have uh, bands or white lines along its body. It's a shy snake, non-aggressive, but uh, dangerously venomous. So it's a powerful snake. If you see, uh, body is uh, dark grey to black and uh, pale underbelly. Uh, cloica is where I'm holding it. And uh, the subcaudal snake's uh, scales are undivided. This is one of the largest specimens that we have seen here. It is uh, 4 feet 7 inches. Otherwise a nocturnal species.
we have a species of uh, Naja cobra called monocold cobra here, more monocolated cobra. Unlike a spectacled cobra, which has a spectacle mark behind its hood, yeah. so this has a round monocold or an eye-shaped mark behind the head. Uh, huge snakes, very uh, commonly available in this region, uh, highly venomous. A lot of cases of dry bites and some reports of uh, spitting of venom. So you can see the monopole clearly, the mark on the hood, it's a good uh, healthy uh, six feet individual, a female actually. Hisses loudly, the one of the loudest hissers in our context. Lastly, I uh, wish to show you uh, Himalayan keelback. Uh, nothing much is known about its venom. It is supposed to be uh, lightly venomous, mildly venomous. There is a prominent mark after the head, if you can see. Uh, orange to yellow uh, mark behind the head. And common species here. Uh, beautiful, beautiful uh, Himalayan keelback is the common name of this species. So uh, that was. have uh, now done with the indication. Uh, are there any questions? I'm scroll up and see. Uh, ready to take on any question. Mm. identification of venomous snakes like uh, I brought out then unless they are visually unique snakes very very difficult to positively identify venomous snakes avoid them let them go their way Arun sir has brought out uh, a subject mm -hmm. on myths. Uh, we've covered that about drinking milk. They don't, of course, don't drink milk. For festivals, some parts of the country, they starve the snakes, don't feed it, uh, offer it water for a long time and then introduce it to milk, a liquid 
that snake assumes uh, in desperation is seen to be drinking. Uh, like uh, I brought out the most of the snake species have very good vision. Some uh, subterranean species which live underground do not have, do not need uh, eyesight, so don't have a very developed uh, vision. Most snakes have good uh, vision and uh, they are able to see very well. They are able to, uh, the chemo receptors on the tongue, uh, it senses uh, particles uh, from electronic particles from the environment through the fleck of tongue and introduce it to the jacob cells charmer moves and a snake is seen to be dancing it looks as if it's dancing to the tune it is just a defense where it's trying to follow the threat that is visible in front of it uh, question about baby snakes uh, i would say um, they are as dangerous but because their defense uh, instinct is a little more uh, so we can say that they are a little more dangerous than normal snakes do not uh, drink milk of course uh, we touched upon the first aid I'll, I'll it's a very important facet somebody's asked about first aid uh, um, Zangli uh, the first aid that is recommended to be done is first and foremost reassure the patient reassure take off any constricting clothing or pieces of jewelry or accessories that have been worn do not give anything orally water or anything Keep talking to the patient and by the fastest means evacuate that patient to nearest medical health center. That is all that is required to be done. Um, I There's an, another suggested uh, add-on step that at times uh, may or may not be hmm, propagated by the scientific community is to put ice packs on the side of the bite is supposed to bring down the ambient temperature of the bite site and reduce the flow of venom into the system slows down so a lot of doctors especially from outside india recommend use of an ice pack at the bite site uh, about video stopping i'm not very sure whether i'm still live or uh, it shows me live so i Video is playing okay to look like. Uh, there's an interesting question that has come from uh, uh, Mrs. Renu. Uh, can snakes fly? Uh, there are a couple of snakes. No snake can classically fly. There are snakes which have modified their bodies, can uh, extend their bodies like you must have noticed in this uh, uh, red-necked keelback. Uh, they flatten their body and glide from a higher platform to a lower platform. Mostly a defense technique used to escape predation. Ornate flying snake or paradise flying snake is an example of this. No snake can classically fly. Uh, is snake blind? Question is, are snakes, snakes have beautiful eyesight. Like I said, a lot of burrowing snakes are blind. There is a genus of blind snakes by itself but most snakes can see very well uh, snakes like uh, uh, can they hear or no like i said um, they can feel uh, low scale vibrations through their uh, lower jaw so they are uh, not deaf classically Are all snakes venomous? That's uh, again and very interesting and uh, I would find it a very uh, intriguing question. Uh, earlier the snakes were defined as venomous and non-venomous. Dangerously venomous, mildly venomous, non-venomous. A new school of thought believes that all snakes are venomous to a degree. The saliva. What is venom? Venom is modified saliva. So 
all snakes are venomous to a degree. There's some kind of a toxicity in their saliva. The supposedly non-venomous. They may not be dangerous to us as humans, but they carry a degree of venom. This is a newer uh, school of thought, though yet to be uh, fully uh, propagated and published. Any uh, snake, in case of a snake bite, avoid panic. That is a big no-no. Avoid exertions, another big no-no. Don't take anything orally or otherwise. Reach best medical health facility as soon as possible. Do not tie tourniquets. Do not cut or try and suck venom out of the bite side. Uh, it is recommended that if the that uh, the uh, bite site is immobilized, a light bandaging of the area is done to keep it immobilized. You may want to introduce a splint also, but it should be so long uh, bite site between the body and the splint. This is primarily to immobilize and uh, decrease the spread of uh, venom. Uh, Rita has asked a question, if accidentally someone comes in contact with a snake, should the person avoid gazing? The question is about a uh, lot of uh, times with the larger mammals, carnivore venom mammals, you are recommended not to make an eye contact with it um, because it may be not the case in, uh, as far as snakes are concerned. Uh, when you come in contact or close proximity of a snake, Please move back slowly without any uh, threatening gestures. Move back slowly and uh, let the snake go its own way. That's the best uh, recommended thing. Uh, you can look at it and don't look at it as uh, irrelevant. It's, it has no impact on the thing. Uh, Like I said, as far as the site is concerned, uh, specific uh, species specific. Uh, surprisingly, a lot of snakes do have very good, very good eyesight. Uh, some have specialized eyesight, like the wine snakes, which have uh, elliptical pupils, which are um, uh, binocular vision. It gives them to exactly home on to their prey. Um, Madhuji is asking me how can we know if it's a dry bite or a real bite. There is no way to know till uh, you start developing uh, actual symptoms. There are some pseudo symptoms also that comes with panic. Only doctors will know. You and me can never know whether it's a dry bite or an actual bite, whether envenomation has happened or it's just a dry bite. There's no way to know. Uh, Asimji is asking me, uh, do we have essential drugs and anti-venoms available in primary healthcare centers? Uh, this is a subject that needs more attention now. WHO has come up and described this as a dangerous tropical disease actually, which has a solution and anti-venom is available. However, uh, most of the district hospitals also. Uh, production is a concern, high cost is a concern, uh, government is, uh, I do believe, taking some steps to promote uh, more uh, production of uh, anti-venom in regions because each region, similar species, has a different uh, composition of its venom. So mm -hmm. what uh, anti-venom that you produce in Chennai may not be very uh, helpful to you for a snake bite in Northeast. So it would be desirable and government's policy says it should be down to primary health center level, anti-venom should be available, but sadly it is not.
I will once again make a very humble request to you uh, in the process of uh, showing you some snakes just to retain your interest and show you some unique snakes of this region. I have handled the snakes. I request you not to please try it. It's a dangerous uh, uh, method of handling snakes. Please, please do not try it at home. You may either harm the animal or you could be in statistics tomorrow. The only sustainable solution to human snake uh, uh, conflict situation is education. Snakes are primarily, but for their venom, we would have ignored snakes like anything. But because of the venom, snakes have, we are finding them uh, something dangerous and fascinating. Uh, there's a huge need to educate people. There is a very easy way are helpful to the farmers, to all of us. And uh, they are a very, very important part of the ecosystem. They maintain uh, the balance in the biodiversity. Uh, if we do not take active steps to conserve the biodiversity, no, no species can be conserved by in isolation. You have to conserve the biodiversity to conserve everything in it. Um, we can, we've been for millions of years living in a peaceful coexistence. Thankfully, the Hindu way of uh, our myths are based on uh, snakes having in respected positions. They're sitting on heads of a god, the Sheshnag is uh, guarding the entire universe and what have you. So, um, snakes have a revered status in parts of our culture, which is a very big must. Otherwise, uh, first reaction an average person has is to take a stick and bash a snake to death. Uh, very difficult to convince people, but all of you, I'm sure, will join hands with me and convince people that we can coexist without. Kipal is asking, do you train people and have workshops? No. Uh, 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 though I, in the couple of years, I plan to move time into the field. But yes, uh, right now I'm not doing it. Uh, Somebody has asked an interesting question. What do you do if you see a snake charmer? Please report him immediately to the forest department and to the police. Like I brought out, all snakes are protected under Indian Wildlife Protection Act. Nobody is permitted to hold, keep or imprison snakes. Precautions like I brought out, please avoid moving out bare feet, avoid sleeping on ground. Use of mosquito net in rural areas is a very effective precaution against snake bite. Please move with a torchlight at night. Try and wear shoes when you move out. Do not put your hand into dark places, under wood, in burrows, in holes. Mm, these are basic precautions. Uh, I'm sharing my mail ID. Uh, Ma'am, my mail ID is YPSR99. Uh, I'm sharing it here. Anybody has any queries can please contact me there also. Why should we do to what should we do to rescue snake from a snake charmer? Again, same. Uh, please report it to the nearest uh, forest department and police lodge in uh, FIR. Uh, Doctor Dipendapal has asked: Is rattlesnake uh, poisonous? Uh, again, uh, we go back to the basic venom with a V poison. It's an ongoing debate. Uh, very simply said, venom is what is injected and uh, poison is what is ingested. So snakes are venomous. Uh, rattlesnake does not uh, is not found in a subcontinent, not in a country, uh, found in America. Yes, it's a venomous uh, species though. Uh, 
there's a question about it's in us us has given its citizens that legal uh, leeway to keep uh, exotic animals as pets um, as far as safety is concerned how safe it is to keep them as pets um, animals that are born in generations in animal that has come from wild first generation is a little more regressive however no snake can be predicted in its behavior 100% so if i was to give a recommendation no you must not keep a wild animal as a pet it doesn't make any sense Now, flaring, hooding is all snakes. Some snakes have what hood displays done. The coat, um, the of your figure, Sena, and the king cobra, and the, the false cobra, they have hooding. A lot of other snakes flatten their necks, so it's not a classical hood, but do they do extend their necks. To appear larger than actually they are that's their threat display uh, rat snakes too um, have been uh, cited to flatten their necks uh, and raise their heads and wave their bodies in uh, alarm so hooding is not common to all snakes some species have specialized hoods and some have none Thank you everyone. Uh, I think I am done. I have uh, probably answered all questions and queries. If there are any more, I'll be grateful if you can address them to me directly, either uh, through my email ID or... Thank you so very much. ...session to talk about snakes, which is my passion. And uh, thank you for your time. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. God bless. Jai Hind.